Welcome everybody to the 8th episode of the Struggling Scientist podcast. This is a podcast by scientists, for scientists, anybody science adjacent and perhaps even hobbyist. My name is Susanna and I'm here with my co-host Jeron. Hi. Today we're going to do another episode of Cutting Edge Research question mark and we're going to talk about mountain gorillas. Let's start. Jeroen, yeah. you read a paper about mountain gorillas that again was recommended by the Nature Facebook page, right? Yes, I think you're uh, underselling this paper though, because it's obviously about some of the most fascinating research ever, namely chest beats as an honest signal of body size in male mountain gorillas, uh, between brackets, gorilla berenge berenge. Yes. Well, that's what everybody wants to know about, of course. Of course, this is the stuff we need more funding for. <laughs> this is the stuff that needs to be promoted on the Nature Facebook page, obviously. Yeah. Okay, so tell us something about this paper then. Well, first off, maybe uh, let's start with the why. Why would anyone be interested in just beating gorillas? Mm -hmm. Well, um from reading the background, because I too am very new to this field of chest beating research. Yeah, biological research, that's, that's, that's different. Yes, there's a s somewhat difference between medical biology and somewhat. actual biology. Somewhat. Somewhat difference. I remember counting the amount of times that, that uh, chipmunks like to stand up in an hour. That's crucial information. Yeah, okay. Continue, continue. Mm -hmm. Well... So in the background, they mention among the most emblematic or sort of symbolic sounds in the animal kingdom is the chest beat of a gorilla. I think we can all imagine what that's like. No, and no, 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 no. You need, to, you need to show us. Well, luckily I don't have to because if you actually check out the article, they put a picture of a gorilla <laughs> doing a chest beat. A picture, yeah, yeah. that's totally going to... Okay. Yeah. And they also describe in like at least one sentence what a chest beat is. Okay, so, what is a chest beat? Damn it, why did you have to ask me that? I didn't actually write that down. <laughs> that is crucial information. Yeah, that's How are our go listeners going to know what a chest beat is like? I believe in that one sentence they sort of mentioned that they had to like curve their hands and put it to their chest and actually beat it like that. Uh, there may or may not be um, following a actual vocal noise that the gorillas make right before actually doing the chest beating and it's a very short thing. Um, yeah, something along those lines, but don't quote me on that. I uh, was trying to figure out what exactly nature saw in this paper. But, okay, okay. But so, back to my thing. It's a non-vocal signal that is thought to be important in intra- and intersexual competition, yet it is unclear whether it, it reliably indicates body size. Ergo, uh, um, this entire study. And that's important because... Well, obviously, Suzanne, if you knew anything about gorilla research, you would know that body size of males is thought to reflect fighting ability as it strongly correlates with dominance rank in multi-male mountain gorilla groups. But and can they just see that then? No, well, they could be quite far apart, right? They could be over like a kilometer away in like a You can forest. hear chest beats that far away? Yes. Apparently gorillas can, I guess. Or Okay. Yeah. That's that's some impressive chest beat. I know, right? And they only do it like 0 0.5 times every 10 hours. So once a day, give or take. So this has to be an impressive chest beat, you know? That's also an interesting thing to record then. Yeah. You sit, you sit there for 10 hours and then... Well, it's sort of unclear to me when I guess we'll get to that, how exactly they did all these recordings, but we'll get to that. Um, but so basically, it already is known that Chest beatings is something that's symbolic of gorillas. We, when we think gorillas, we think chest beating. Sure. And uh, the chest beating is associated with the um, the fighting, or at least body size. It's it's unclear whether it, the chest beating is associated with body size, and but body size at least is known to be strongly correlated with how dominant the gorilla is and mm -hmm. how um, successful it is at reproducing. And what they want specifically wanted to know in this study is. What if the chest beat conveys information about body size and if that information is true or if it's some sort of if you posturing? Can fake it. Yes. Okay. So 
That's the entire goal of this study, to find out if chest beats convey body size to other gorillas. Or if you can fake it. Yes. That's interesting research. I, I know, right? I mean, this, this, this took two years of rec- recording uh, to find out. Two years of somebody's life. Of multiple people's lives. Okay. I hope they also did other stuff in the meantime, but yeah. Yeah. But so what's also weird to me is that they did all these recordings in 2014 to 2016 and the paper was only now published in 2021. So I don't know, maybe an editor finally gave in after five years or something. (laughs) Wait, wait, wait. wait. Where is it actually published? uh, Nature Scientific Reports. Okay, does, what kind of impact factor does that have? I believe something like three. So it's actually not that high, but... but that's mean, a lot lower than, than our plant research. Yes, paper. plant research, blue blue plants, very high. It's obviously more important than gorillas. Um, yeah, I mean, they could have at least made the argument that like conservation funding could have gone to gorillas, but even that they uh, didn't. So they yeah, didn't. lower on the okay. list. Yeah. So... I've learned quite a lot from reading the introduction of this uh, paper about gorillas and their, okay. yeah. So, uh, among which is what I already mentioned: uh, how infrequently these silverback gorillas beat their chest, about zero point five times per ten hours. But it is important to mention they may beat more, especially on days when females are in estrus. So, very. <laughs> <laughs> Very important stuff right there. May beat more on those days. Uh, how much more? Like a lot more? or uh, Unclear. Unclear, N- More okay. research is required. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. yeah. Um, there was also another thing uh, regarding these gorillas. Um, is this an only male thing or do females do it too? Oh, yeah, that was it. It's unclear from the the text because they say it's mainly uh, the chest beatings are mainly done by males, but presumably that would also mean some females do it. But I have no idea what sort of the why. Did they also measure females then, or only males? They only measured males. Okay. okay. But in again, in just sort of the introduction, they briefly stated like this is mostly done by male uh, male gorillas. Mm, okay, so it's a sexist paper too. Well, the paper maybe is not... Well, yeah, okay, they only measured males, yes. Yes. But I guess if, you know, a gorilla might only beat 0.5 times per 10 hours and those are the males, if it's less frequent in females, it probably happens like once a year or something. Yes. <laughs> on, on like their most estrus day or something to tra- attract a male, I don't know. This, 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 this is a paper. Okay. Well, that's not something you can wait for, of course. Well, I mean, two years, so you might get two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the the goal was to find out if the chest beatings associated with body size and if they were an actual, quote-unquote, true indication of body size. Mm-hmm. So they measured 25 gorillas. Um one second. In like different groups or where? Or? Uh, some of them on the same group. So some of them had, I think, two or three male gorilla gorillas in the group. Um, so yeah, they, yeah, here we go. They measured a total of 3,211 hours of focal animal sampling uh, in those two years. Okay. Um, uh, and the mean time that they measured per gorilla was 128 hours. So 128 and, hours. How how many days is that? Uh, that's like five days and eight hours. That's honestly not a lot. No, but I mean, 25 gorillas it adds up over two years, and apparently it's quite well, difficult to find the gorillas, maybe even. Yeah. Hmm. And is this in a conservation thing or? Are they in, in captivity and like? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I'm also just wrote down uh, that they had these gorillas and they did it in like a sort of foresty situation. In a foresty situation, that's that okay. Okay, but it was in Africa. In Africa, okay. Well, then I assume that they're not in captivity. Eh, you never know. I mean, it could just be a big uh, wildlife preserve. Yeah. Need to double check the paper. Clearly, I miss I missed something there. Some key gorilla information. Okay. 
Um, so yeah, they looked at all these uh, 25 male gorillas. Mm-hmm. And what they wanted to do was examine whether body size related to peak frequency, so how the hertz of the, yeah, the gorilla, gorilla chest beatings. Okay. The beat rate, so how fast they were beating their chest, the duration, and how often they actually, the, or the number of beats that they do. So they looked at those measurements as like the, the, the measurements for chest beating and just try to relate body size to that. Mm -hmm. But in addition, they were also interested in examining the relationship between the body size and these non -vo and non vocal drumming sound. And so their prediction was that larger males, their chest beat might either be longer or with a greater number of beats or even faster than smaller male gorillas. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they hypothesize that this sort of acoustic signaling is quite energy intensive. So if they, if a smaller gor gorilla would want to intimidate uh, or imitate a bigger gorilla and try to indicate that information to another gorilla from like a kilometer away, it would require a lot more energy. And if it's even possible for them to do it, so they try to look at that. Whether is it is this information? Uh, easy to fake is it a or is it a true indication of body size and so they looked at those different measurements of chest beating and to see which one of them actually correlates with body size and for body size since you can imagine it's quite difficult to measure a gorilla that's still completely awake and might not want any humans around it mm -hmm. they sort of use lasers to measure uh different <laughs> uh um, they measured the gorillas with lasers yes Okay. High tech stuff over here. <laughs> they must have found that fun. Yeah, from a distance, of course. So, uh, yeah. So they took two different measurements of body size. I think um, so. One of them was sort of the the shoulder back situation that they measured for the body size, uh -huh. and I think they also measured uh, the chest as well. But both of them are highly correlated with each other. So, yeah, and well, both of them if showed you sim have same thing. Have a bigger thing. back, then you also have a bigger chest. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Science. Science. <laughs> we did it, guys. They actually showed this correlation too. Supplementary. <laughs> so. Wow. Hardcore science over here. We can't just assume <laughs> chest and back are correlated, so we show it statistically. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The real science. Yep, the hard hitting science of the chest beating kinds. Okay, and what did they? What did they find? Well. So after examining all those different ways of measuring a chest beat. Um, and they what, re recorded the chest beats, right? Yes. Okay. Their key finding was that larger males had a significantly lower peak frequency than smaller ones. Uh, but they found no consistent relationship between the body size and any other of the chest beating uh, measurements that did like the duration or the number of beats or the beat rate. Okay, so basically it was just a deeper sound. Yes, so uh, they even say an increase in one standard deviation in body size resulted in a decrease of 34.6 hertz in the peak frequency. And that took them how many years to publish? <laughs> um, well, two years to collect the data. <laughs> and uh, I guess since 2016 to 2021 to write and get published, I guess. I don't okay. know. So yeah. That was their main find. I, I don't know how to try and say it more elegantly than that. That was their main finding. Okay, and and the speed and everything that they are mentioned they didn't matter. No, none of so them. So small worse. gorillas are just as fast as big gorillas. Yep, but so and it, they also noted that both dominant and sort of subordinate male gorillas, because they looked at gorillas in sort of same groups uh, as mm -hmm. well. Sometimes both of them emitted chest beats. But in general, the gorilla males most likely to uh, to attract estrous females uh, were of bigger body size. Yes. Yeah, so, but, but they already knew that that dominant males. Yeah, yeah. But also, you can imagine that uh, th there are different groups of gorillas, uh -huh. and some of the, these females essentially just are going to whichever <laughs> male gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> they Seasonal, like at that moment. Yeah, so may me the may have the best genes, as it were, and I guess in this case that is conveyed through chest beatings. 
So I am not sure if you can make that correlation because mm-hmm. bigger gorillas are the more dominant ones, mm-hmm. make more chest beats to intimidate other gorillas. That makes total sense. And that they are also the ones that get more females is also like super logical. So that you then can say that the chest beats are the cause for it. No. No, well, I I might be jumping the gun there. I'm not sure. I, they're not really saying that, you know, the chest beats are the one-to-one okay, the cause okay, to okay, that. Okay, okay, okay. But it is like... The chest beats. Well, are, they studied it for two years, so of course it is important. Well, they are the, the they are the experts in the chest beats. Yeah, beatings. exactly. But now it I, needs to be important. Yes. So there are some weird things happening here beyond just you know we're spending years looking at gorillas. Mm-hmm. So they mentioned that the so the specific reason why they were interested in chest beats as well is that they're a non-vocal version of communication. So you know, sure. gorillas can also make sounds with their mouth. But research into chest beatings and how or non-vocal communication and what information that can convey is apparently less prominent than vocal Mm -hmm. communication. So this is another reason why they wanted to study this in more detail. But they also specifically mentioned that a lot of times prior to a chest beating, there's also a vocal uh, sound that's being made by the gorillas sort of preceding that chest beating. And it's not always the case, but it is often the case. So I wonder how much information is already conveyed by that vocal, I don't know, uh, hooting of the gorilla right before the chest beating. Yeah. Yeah. So how important the chest beat actually is. Yeah. So while it might be associated with body size, maybe the actual information is conveyed by the gorilla just going hoot, you know, or whatever gorillas do, I guess. (laughs) Okay, yeah. So, well, I mean, it's interesting to look in, into animals, like non-verbal communications, of course, and try to understand a bit more about that. Mm-hmm. But I wish they would have just also, like, seen the effect of it. Like, if yeah, it's difficult, of course, but... Yeah, we were sort of talking about this uh, before the podcast, about maybe sort of doing a fake gorilla situation. Yeah, where you where you play the sound and see if a lower hertz actually has a more intimidating effect than a higher hertz before, for example. Mm-hmm. Then you can actually sort of see the actual effect of this. Yeah. But I also wonder to what extent these gorillas are aware of each other, right? Because presumably they're in diff- some of them are in different groups. So it might be that they've come across each other and they sort of just know like, this gorilla, this bigger gorilla is there. So if I just, and they know what it sounds like, so they just hear it as like, uh, they already know that it's a bigger gorilla. Mm. So I don't really know. In this case, they see the association that the way that the gorilla does the chest beat or the sound of the chest beat associates with its body size. And that's fair enough. But indeed to your point of like the effect of that, is that is any effect that a gorilla might take upon hearing a larger gorilla's chest beat yeah well especially if if it's from a bigger distance and you cannot actually see this gorilla mm-hmm. it would be super interesting if they for example use this sound to show where their territory is and that other gorillas if they hear that like either leave or mm-hmm. come closer to fight or something happens that might be helped at least by this chest beating because yeah. it is one of the sounds that they can make that goes quite far yeah and i also it might also just be interested interesting because they have like the the recordings of the chest beatings of like Mm -hmm. smaller gorillas so it might just be interesting to like take that recording and play it back but like lower the frequency and just see like if that's the only parameter you change of that recording and suddenly a gorilla does something different the gorilla hearing it does something different than it would have hearing the then you know but they don't even say anything about the response of other gorillas mm-hmm. when this chest beating happens yeah they don't say when these gorillas make the chest beats in these specific situations mm-hmm. if there is for example a difference between a chest beat that's happening to intimidate somebody you want to fight or a chest beat that you make to uh get a female mm-hmm. that might be completely different but they just throw it all onto one big pile and just say something about the sound yep and we still that difficult question of 
female do chess they music. Say, do they say anything about the consistency of chess beats? What do you mean by the consistency? Well, if one male, for example, always has a similar chest beat, if there's like differences between that? Mm, I'm not exactly sure. Because uh, I, I do remember that they had like an entire table of like some gorillas and they sort of have like the mean frequency and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if it's what the variability of it is. Because I can imagine they also, uh, their, one of their initial hypotheses was that it's uh, quite ener- energetically costly to do a chest beat. So I can imagine if a gorilla is tired or whatever, mm-hmm. that can also have Im- impact how their chest beat is. Honestly, I think we're thinking very deeply about all this chest beating. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be interesting. Yes. If they had some info about what it actually means, I think. Yes, if it can actually, if it actually function, functions as a way of communication communication between the gorillas that you can sort of modulate in some way. I, well, I don't think it's a bad paper or whatever or that that they shouldn't be published because it's, it's interesting. No, of course. I, yeah, I agree. But to be promoted on Nature Facebook page, I mean, it's really cool that Nature chose them, but for it the rest a, of us... <laughs> it is a very um, different unique type of research that we're not really accustomed to i guess yeah that too that too but yeah i think it's also just a bit of the jealousy of how difficult it is to with basic science to get to that point that your research is so interesting that random people want to hear about it Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then this they do want to hear about apparently and so now we know that uh chest beatings are a, a true signal of body size between gorillas yeah and that they cannot fake it yep yeah well that's the the true aspect of it yeah 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 that that's that's my take home message that gorillas don't fake it yep (laughs) and they uh they beat more when estrus females are around ah yeah of course of course not to forget yeah okay so, do do you actually think that it was a well written paper? That it was an interesting like story? Um, yeah, I don't know. I still struggle. Obviously, it's very hard to get enough gorillas to do uh, a lot of testing on, or re- get more recordings, or for example, for females as well, since they apparently can chest beat. Um, but I would have liked to maybe see greater numbers. I would, the in terms of the writing. It was a fine paper to read. I read it quite easily, but it's sort of, you finish reading it, and it's like, yes, we see an association between, or we see a significant result that peak frequency associates to body size. Hmm. The end. Yeah, but separate from like the data, mm-hmm. it was it was an okay written paper. I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I definitely learned something new, I guess. So. Mm-hmm. so. Yes. Okay. Now, we will be... Um, posting the link to this podcast and also the paper on our Facebook page and on our LinkedIn page where you can find us under the Struggling Scientist podcast, of course, or the Struggling Scientist on Facebook. And um, if you have any questions, comments, ideas... Specifically about gorillas. (laughs) Or not gorillas, please uh, contact us either via LinkedIn, Facebook, or via our email address, thestrugglingscientist at hotmail.com. We do not respond to chest beatings. Well, <laughs> we could in person, maybe, but I don't know if that's the ideal form of communication for non gorilla primates like oh. us. I don't know. It might be interesting. Okay, you can respond to that. <laughs> I'll respond to the email. <laughs> okay. So I'm currently uh, going to do the dumb to dumb run for research, and I'm doing so, I'm doing it for a charity called Heart for Onderzoek, which is Heart for Research. And if anyone would like to donate to support research, go check out my uh, cave.nl action and you can donate to support research. We'll also share it on our LinkedIn yeah. and our Facebook page. Well, thank ev- thanks everybody for listening and I hope you, you uh, enjoyed this um, interesting paper with us and I um, hope to see you all next time. Bye! Bye!